All right, the next part, once you have decided on a topic and once you've decided or created your testable question, then you can move on to your purpose and then move on to your research. And I'm going to combine purpose and research because they kind of fit together. And so when you're thinking about what a purpose for a science fair project, you, you got to think about it like a scientist thinks about when a scientist does uh, a, science, a science experiment. And so what they're doing, they, they're trying to find out something. They're not just doing it for fun, although it is. They're trying to find out something that's going to that's gonna be purposeful for, for us as regular people. And so they want to find something, and so they have to think about, all right, what am I trying to do? What is... What is my overall goal for this project? And so when you write a purpose, and this is something that you do include on your board, because when a science fair uh, is, is being displayed or a project is being displayed or a judge is coming around, they're going to look at your question to see, all right, what did they try to find out? And then the purpose is, you know, why? Why do they want to find this out? And so you want to write a one to three sentence explanation describing what do you want to find out about uh, once you complete this project. And so an example would be the purpose of this project is to find out if a pea plant will grow taller when given caffeine rather than water. And so the purpose is going to help you to think about what you're going to research because if you want to find out about, you know, will something else besides water help it grow faster, taller, then you got to think about, all right, why would caffeine do that? Or why would caffeine make it not grow as tall. And so when you're thinking about that, you're saying, okay, what is in caffeine? What does caffeine have that could either help a plant or what could it ha does it have to uh, help it to hurt a plant? And so that's going to lead you to your research because scientists, they spend, if you're looking at a science experiment, they spend a majority of the time not doing the experiment, but they're doing the research and they're doing the writing, which comes at the end. And so for you, a lot of what you're going to be doing, the actual what you're doing is researching. You're finding out information. And what's great about this is that the research can be the most beneficial to you in the learning process because you're going to learn a lot of stuff in the research that you're going to help you with your project, but it's just going to help you uh, in school and in science and, and in life. And so once you move to or move past your purpose, finding out why you want to do this project, you're going to move into your research. And so your research is going to, get, again, just like your testable question, is going to be specific. And so it's going to be designed to get background information about your topic. And that's before you ever do an experiment. You don't do research after, you do it before. That's very important. And so you're getting information that's going to help you to start thinking, all right, what's going to happen? What, what, why is this going to happen? And so you want to come up with about three questions that you want to have answered about your topic. And these questions are going to be answered in your research. And so, for example, if you are wanting to do the plant that's in here, you might want to say, what is caffeine? And so you're going to do a research. What is caffeine? Or you might want to say, all right, what, um, you know, talk about maybe a pea plant. If, you're, if that's the plant that you're using, a, a plant, a plant um, for a, a pea plant, what, you know, what is it, how does a pea plant grow? So you want to do some research. And so some research sources that you might use, of course, you want to go to your library and check out some books, uh, maybe if it's on caffeine or if you want to find out some things about plants, what plants need to grow. Uh, some other resources that may or may not be beneficial to this specific example. Uh, magazines, newspapers, sometimes people want to do uh, a science fair project on current events, and so they would use a newspaper. That was probably that would be a source they would use for something that's happening right now. And then, of course, the Internet is probably going to be your easiest, most likely source of information. But, of course, if you're a student watching this, be very careful on the Internet. Always have uh, a teacher or an adult there helping you because sometimes you want to, you might type in something and it might pull up something that you probably don't need to be looking at or probably don't need to see. So you want to have an adult helping you with the internet. So once you've come up with your testable question and you know what you want to try to find out, then think about why you want to do this project. What's the purpose of it? How is it going to help uh, us as regular people, as society, um, as a community? How is it going to help us? And then it's, that purpose is going to lead you to topics or specific words that's going to help you with your research. And then once you've completed your research, then you can go to the next topic or the next uh, next part of your scientific method, which is coming up with a guess or a prediction. And that has a special word in a scientific method. It's called a hypothesis.